Today we are going to talk about the sea beast, the rise of the sea beast. Let us begin with its or his actually appearance. Then I saw a beast rising out of the sea that had ten horns and seven heads on his horns were ten royal crowns, and upon his heads were slander's names. Recently we studied Revelation 12. The dragon, identified as Satan, persecutes the woman or the group of true believers. This is what chapter 12 is about. Chapter 12 is concluded with words. So the dragon was enraged with the woman. After that, the dragon doesn't act openly. Instead, we see the beast. Then I saw a beast rising out of the sea. The beast is very powerful. The ten royal crowns confirm that. The horns represent political powers or kingdoms. And we may expect a giant beast, but instead we see something which is relatively small. Many people believe that this sea beast is huge, but let's read carefully. Now the beast that I saw was like a leopard, his feet like a bear's, and his mouth like a lion's. And the dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. A leopard is not big. On average, a length of a leopard is about four feet. An average leopard weighs around 100 pounds. That's it. Even though the beast is pretty small, it possesses the power of Persia. His feet are like bears. The beast also has influence of Babylon. His mouth is like a lion's. He is composed out of details taken from the book of Daniel. In other words, this beast concentrates the power of the previous empires. The beast receives three things from the dragon. The power, the throne, and the authority. One more detail is striking. One of his heads seemed to have been slain, but the fatal wound was healed. The whole earth was amazed and followed the beast. As you can see, the beast is fatally wounded. Nevertheless, he is alive. This connects the prophecy with the gospel. In the gospels, we find the father who sends the son, the Messiah, to die for the people. The Messiah who dies and gets resurrected. In the book of Revelation, the dragon has the beast who looks very similar to the dragon. The beast is slain, but the fatal wound is healed. This tells us that the beast is a false messiah, exactly as the messiah looks like his father. Exactly the same situation is found in the book of Revelation 13. We see the beast, and this beast looks exactly like the dragon. And what's interesting, as we just read, the wound is found on this beast. The fatal wound, but it was healed. This reminds us about the resurrection of the Messiah. But here we have a fake resurrection. And here is the result. How do people react? Maybe they reject the idea of the false messiah. Maybe the majority of humans denounce the beast. And they worshipped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast. They also worshipped the beast, chanting 
who is like the beast, and who can make war against him. The population of the earth accepts the idea of the false messiah. And what actions does this beast perform? How does the beast act? The beast was given a mouth, uttering great boasts and blasphemies. It was given authority to act for 42 months. This verse informs us that the beast was uttering boasts and blasphemies. It acts against God's truth. And importantly, the beast acts for 42 months or three and a half days or 1,260 days. The beast rebels against God, his name, and his tabernacle. He makes war against the believers and overcomes them. All who dwell on the earth worship him, everyone whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life. In other words, there is still a small remnant of people who resist. Who is this beast? There are different interpretations. It could be the Roman Empire. It could be the Roman emperors. Often it's identified as Nero. Other mighty emperors. Charles Darwin. Adolf Hitler. Joseph Stalin. There are numerous attempts to identify the beast. And these different options tell us that people approach this issue differently. There are different schools. Preterism, historicism, futurism, idealism. Representatives of these schools actually approach the issue differently. Representatives of preterism believe that the majority of events described in the book of Revelation are in the past. According to the preterism, Nero is the best candidate. This interpretation likely was relevant to the first Christians. Historicists interpret prophecies as historical events that happened in the past and will happen in the future. Representatives of these schools are John Wycliffe, John Calvin, and Martin Luther, as well as other prominent figures such as Isaac Newton, historicists believe that the beast represents papacy. Futurists interpret this prophetic symbol as a restored Roman Empire, which will oppose God's kingdom at the end of days. Idealism offers some abstract interpretation. Who is correct? Nero played an important role in church history, indeed, however, he didn't act for 1,260 days. Futurists and idealists propose very general interpretation. The text clearly indicates that the sea beast is a successor of the Roman Empire, this is clear. The beast is responsible for religious persecutions, papacy, which emerged from the Roman Empire, killed millions of people and eliminated any type of religious liberty in Europe. It is the likely candidate. I mentioned already that papacy reigned for approximately 1,260 years, and what is really interesting, Berthier was with Napoleon during the 1797th campaign in 1798, while in this role he went to Italy, invaded the Vatican, set up the Roman Republic and captured Pope Pius VI. Pius died after a difficult journey. The Pope's death was a significant hit to the Vatican's political influence. This looks exactly like a wound described in the book of Revelation. 
when we interpret the sea beast of Revelation as the papacy of the Middle Ages, it might sound harsh when we agree with Wycliffe, Calvin, Luther and other reformers. It might seem outdated. Nevertheless, we cannot forget the oppressive reign of the Pope in the Middle Ages. At the beginning, God had his church on the earth. The church was oppressed and persecuted. The followers of the Messiah were often tortured and killed. And later, the church gained political power. Very quickly, the church became a persecutor. The church, which suffered injustice from the dragon's side, very quickly became a beast who tortured and persecuted opponents. The history repeats itself. If I rely on political power, if I force my opponents to change their opinion instead of preaching and ministering to my neighbors, I will become a beast very quickly. Who am I? A part of the faithful remnant or a member of a persecuting organization?